Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. Hello, everyone. This is David with Dub's Treasure Store. I've got my uh, buddy and guest who you've known if you followed us for a while. It's Irving. Uh, we call him Joel. He, um, you know, does all kinds of random things with us. Say hello. Hey, how are you guys? And of course, we haven't given her her official nickname alias yet, but it's Amber with Mythic Info or ElegantSapphire.com. Today, We've got two major things we're going to cover. We'll see where that uh, segues to. Um, the main thing is we, we got a little bit of baseball info, um, news story to talk about. And then she's got a really important um, conspiracy theory article that we can actually document. So it's not just all theorizing. It's actually good stuff because we're bringing – we had a comment suggestion on Dub's Treasure Store's website saying, your articles this week were kind of boring. Um, we've been preparing a lot of good content that's highly controversial, that's definitely going to catch your attention, and I promise you this article, if you don't like this article, then there's something wrong with you. All right, so on the baseball topic, I went to Chipper Jones' official last game. It's his, it was his last game yesterday uh, versus the New York Mets. We won. Uh, I left in the, eighth, the top of the eighth inning, and it was 6-1. to one. Yeah, I know, I didn't stay. I had little kids. But I know we won. It was 6-1 to one in the top of the eighth. And they didn't score for five innings. Last game and you leave? I thought you stayed, man. No. Well, we went out and we went out to the very beginning, the front gate, and they had a big TV screen on the front, on the opposite side of the field, and we did watch to the bottom of the eighth, and they were still the same score. Uh, I know it was horrible, but dude, the track it was sold out, man. The stadium was so full. Like if we had waited to the end, the kids were tired and stuff. But on a lighter note, I, I am upgrading our equipment. I'm always trying to uh, fun, fun resources back into our operations here. I started off as a single man operation. I'm expanding as much as I can. I got us a new microphone, better than my crappy little microphone. Um, we do have a like a redneck jigger rig kind of <laughs> uh, microphone holder, but hopefully this microphone will bring better sound quality. If, um, if it's bad sound quality, let us know, because we're trying to do all of these. I'm investing all this money and time to bring you guys a better experience. So um, I guess this, let's, this is what all this here is for, is about it's Braves uh, member, uh, memorabilia, and it's got another side story I've been collecting for a while. And this now, I've got a pretty good set complete of stuff that I'm going to put on eBay that I want to talk about. That's, a seg that's our last segue into her article. So first of all, the score was six to one when we were leaving at the um, bottom of the eighth inning. And as Joel and I were talking, uh, he hit a Chipper Jones. He looked tired, and you know he was playing really hard. You could just tell, like he he was uh, when he, you know he plays third base, and um, he like in the very beginning of the game it was action packed. Like he slid in and caught a ball and got an out on the first inning, but you could tell it hurt him, or like he was tired, but he was playing his ass off. But the main topic that we're going to talk about that is he hit um, a grand slam. Um, and when it happened, I, the person I was with, my family member I was with, I was like, do you think that um, the Mets were letting him do that, or like they were letting him win because it was his last game? And, and uh, my older sister was like, no. Nah, because you got to think about it. These baseball players are getting paid millions of dollars. They're not getting paid millions to lose. They're getting paid big money to win. So, you know, think about it, how humiliating or embarrassing it would for Chipper Jones to lose his last game. So that's where Joel and I disagreed. Uh, go ahead and tell them what, you, what we were talking about before we started this show today. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. What I think is it's, it's, it's all BS because it's like, all right, last game of the man's career, right? 20, 20 years. years. 20 years playing for the same team, never been traded or whatever. Right. All right. He goes and hits a grand slam. Right? In the beginning of the game. Fireworks, All right. everything. All right. See, what makes you think that the bat wasn't loaded or the ball was loaded? What I think it is, it's just it was a rigged game just to, you know, last game of the man. He's a legend going into the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. And now with the grand slam on his last game. They did switch. Well, I'm not – I don't – they did switch out balls a lot of the times throughout the whole game, but I, it was just an amazing, eventful game. I can't remember if they switched out the balls right before that, but like they did switch out balls in and out. Because sometimes, because sometimes you know, whenever a pitcher's pitching with a ball, like it'll touch, like 
the uh, ground, and then like the catcher throws it back at him, and then he like like the pitcher checks it out, and if he thinks it's gonna be a good ball or not, he he switches balls. Mm-hmm, you know? mm-hmm. What makes you think that one of those balls wasn't full of rubber bands? You know what I'm saying? Or versus or like some versus paper material. versus paper, what it they're normally filled with newspaper and carton and stuff like that. What makes you think that you know they didn't switch out a ball that was full of rubber bands? So when obviously if you hit like a golf ball with a solid bad made out of wood you're gonna send it out of the ballpark which yeah. that's the same thing with the baseball full of rubber bands yeah or what makes you think if it's not a real baseball with a corked baseball bat like they drill the hole in the bat and fill it full of like Corks. cork that's goes yeah. in a wine bottle yeah basically see I, I i would never never have thought of something like that but when it did happen i did say something to my sister i was like you know you don't think like hey like you know, they let them get that. And she's like, hell no. Like, you know, these players are playing for money, playing for millions of dollars. They're playing for real. You know, someone's got to lose, but why would they just want him to humiliate them? They want to embarrass him because it's his last game. So that did come up even at the game between me and, you know, the people I was there with. And then now, as soon as I brought it up, he was like, I, he threw out the question. I wasn't even thinking about it. So that is kind of interesting. I, I, I mean, I don't know. I just think it's like, you know, nobody's that lucky that he's going to hit a, a grand slam in his last game. Yeah. What makes you think that he couldn't hit that the, the night before? Why, why didn't it happen the night before? And, and, like, and another thing I noticed is the Mets pitchers were throwing about 83 to 86, 88 miles an hour, and the Braves pitcher was throwing anywhere from 92 to 96 miles an hour. Like a major 10 miles an hour difference in the pitchers. That's crazy, too. Um, that's like 10 miles per hour, more visibility that, yeah, that you have of the ball. For him to hit the, the amazing shot. So, I, I don't know. I mean, one of the Mets players in the fourth inning did break a wooden bat and shattered it into a bunch of pieces. So, I, I mean, I don't know. I just We just wanted to throw that out there to you and let you guys see what y'all thought about. Um, comment on it. Comment. Definitely. Yeah, comment on it. Let us know what you think. All right, so finishing up with that story uh, is going to segue into this little thing right here. I've been collecting this since 1996 and 98. Now, when Beanie Babies were really hot, uh, Andre Galarraga had hit a Beanie Baby special promotion. He collected a lot of cats, and, and this, was, uh, this was 1998, August 19, 1998. And you can see he had, he had all of his little kittens and cats there. And they did a special promotion, Beanie Baby, because his favorite cat was named Chip. So they gave away um, a free Beanie Baby per ticket, and the cat is called Chip. Now, I got two of them because one ticket for my mom and one for me when I was a kid. And I have, so I have the program promotional card, and I have the, the um, Ticketmaster ticket that goes with it, and the two Beanie Babies. Then later that same year, in night, and this was... September, yeah, September 2nd, 1988, they did a Greg Maddox Beanie Baby promotion because he has a dog, but it's not, a, it wasn't a pug, but the promotional Beanie Baby they did was a pug named Pugsley, and on the promotional card, let me see, hold on, oh yeah, on the promotional card it says Pugsley right here, and they released the pug, and the pug's name is Pugsley. So I have the program promotional card that goes with the Greg's Maddox, and then the, the ticket stub for that, and then again, my, I got a second one here, and this one that came from that game for me and my mother, uh, our tickets there. I don't have both tickets for this one, but I have, I think I have, no, I've only, for some reason I didn't say both tickets, but I've got one ticket for each of the programs. So then now, Yesterday, or on Sunday, I have, it's not going to be in mint condition, but it is bent a little bit because, I don't know, we were active. So that, it, that's the only unfortunate thing. But I do have the Chipper Chones last game program sheet from that game with the ticket. So if you want to say, oh, you know, I've got the, the Chip Special Beanie Baby uh, cat for the Andre Galarraga and to maybe to represent Chipper Jones if you really like Chip. Uh, I don't know. You, you can just say that. But I do have all of that. So you will, guys. You will see that on eBay very soon. I don't know. I'm going to actually get it appraised, maybe even graded, so I can get a real value for you guys. But it's not something I'm just going to let go 
cheap because I've been collecting it since 98, since I was a little kid, and I've held on to it for a long time. I, I would really even hate to see it go. Um, if you can hear that rain in the background, it's raining really loud, so maybe this new microphone's picking that up. I don't know. But um, anyways, so now I've been doing all the talking and the ranting, and you know, Irving and I have been exchanging ideas. Our main story for tonight's nightly news is Amber has come up with this amazing article that's revealing GMOs. Now, I have created a page on Dove's Treasure Store that's a draft, but I'm going to officially release it this week called GMOs for Genetically Modified Organisms and Genetically Modified Foods. She wrote this article. We're making this video tonight that is a forefront for this article. So we're going to put the intro paragraph on my website, probably the whole article. This is how we're going to do it in the future. We're going to put the intro paragraph of her articles on my website. We're going to bring the video on my YouTube channel and on my website. And then eventually, once we get all of her stuff that's under construction right now, she's going to eventually have her own YouTube channel and her own websites at mythicinfo.com and elegantsapphire.com. Then you would only get half of the article at my sites, my operations. And to get the full exclusive information, you'll have to go over to her operations. But for right now, just so you can get this whole entire article, we'll probably have it up on my website in about a day or two after this video is made. So I'm done ranting, take it away. Okay. Well, we all know that corn is a big um, crop field, what have you, in America. Most of the Midwest, you know, grows a lot of corn. Well, I found out that they are using a chemical that was also used in Agent Orange to grow the corn. It's called 2,4-D, which... 2,4-D? 2,4-D. Oh, 2,4-D. Yeah. Oh, dog. Yeah. <laughs> that, um, they're using it to kill the super weeds that are taking over the cornfields, ragweed, some other ones, that they are choking the corn and taking over. Well, they are taking this 2,4-D and spraying it literally on the corn. And it is also killing the weeds, but it is also going on the corn, which means it goes on the corn, you eat it. So um, scientists have also said that they've done studies and that this chemical does not affect the corn kernel. But if you think about it, how does it not affect the corn kernel when it's being sprayed on there? It's going to be on there no matter what you do because it's going to absorb it. Well, they're saying that it's safe for humans and animals to eat it, but I don't see how that's safe because it was in Agent Orange, which if you know anything about Agent Orange, it was used in Vietnam War by the U.S., developed by the U.S., and it killed a lot of people, and it also affected a lot of our troops who came home with it. So, And, and that reminds me, there is a known... Um, documented evidence that in the Vietnam War, that's where we first deployed uh, chemtrailing or chemical spraying out of airplanes to do mod weather modification. They sent um, F-15s through the clouds um, to create a high condensation or concentration of these chemicals like aluminum and barium salts, uh, sulfur dioxide in the clouds so that the clouds would create, would condensate precipitation at an abnormal rate and then it would drown out the supply lines in the Vietnam War so that our enemies could not get their uh, supplies and reinforcements and all the stuff they needed even though we did lose the war that was the very first documented evidence the, it's declassified information now that they, that was when they first started using um, weather modification which the overall overall lying term is geoengineering and I do have a lot of geoengineering information on my website where uh, Irving and I, or Joel and I, we were at a pool this past summer, and there was tons of planes flying over us. It was a beautiful, clear day. We were at a pool, and there was like literally four planes going over us. They were crisscrossing each other, and they were leaving condensation trails, is what skeptics say, but those condensation trails were not dissipating like a normal condensation trail. They were staying in the sky um, like for a very long period of time, and then all of a sudden, it 
Yeah, and they were spreading out. They weren't dissipating. And then all of a sudden, um, it was a very overclass over it became overcloudy or overcasted, and it just started to rain immediately after that. Yeah, like out of nowhere and it was sunny as hell sunny as hell yeah and and another thing that is known about these is that's one thing geoengineering is made to do is it's to modify the weather so they can bring rain into areas where they don't want uh, other parts of rain to get or they can bring rain into areas where it's really needed now that's getting off the subject that's getting too much into geoengineering and our and see we get on these rants and once you get on the rabbit hole you stare into that abyss and you don't want to be consumed by it so let's get like like okay like it's crazy that you just said that because why is it raining today man yeah it's been, yeah. It's, it's been sunny as hell yeah, yeah. i All didn't these, even like, see it coming for the last <laughs> month and a half dude it's been sunny mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it's raining t uh, two days straight in a row, and it's supposed to rain two more days in a row after this. And it's like, where the hell did the sun go? Yeah. Why is it not here? It's yeah. crazy. It is. And so, you know, like but... Uh, it stormy and it just stopped all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but okay, any, anyways guys, our, our article is about GMOs though, so let's stay on topic. Genetically modified foods and organisms. One other thing I'm going to throw in there is when it comes to the GN, GMOs, Monsanto is the main big agriculture uh, corporation that is known for these. That's why in California there's all these propositions to actually have GMOs labeled on foods. That's like when you go to Starbucks and you see all their little nuts and their cookies and stuff, there's a little black band on the food that says no GMOs, guaranteed. Heat. So GMOs are a big deal and people need to know about it. And another thing that, you know, in her article we wanted to represent was, did you ever find out um, any corporation or business entity that was behind 24D or 24D? Well, there's a mention of a uh, DOW, I guess is how you pr pronounce it, D-O-W, but they didn't say what it was. They didn't say if it was a corporation, if it was like a science group or anything like that and all the information that I kept on running into was that and that, that's all it was it's like there is nothing behind it except for a name so but you, you, really you can go look this up guys and I'm serious there's there's so much outstanding information on the net look it up it's mm -hmm. it's 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 mind-blowing it's almost kind of um, scary you know once you start to dig down into this and a lot of people aren't aware that GMO or GM GMFs have been around since the early 90s. It's that's when this stuff really started to happen and over the past few years that's when it started coming out. And also, a more important note, the um, United States Department of Agriculture and the Environmental Protection Agency has passed this. So, it, As of when? What, when did they pass this? I think it was last year. All right. And it's just going to keep on going and they're going to keep on using these other chemicals and other things that we don't need to do this to our food and these corporations and things are supposed to um, protect us and help us I mean how's it environmental friendly if you're taking a, a chemical and spraying it in the air and saying that it's fine for you to eat it when you You've seen what it can do, and the scientists are saying that it's not responsible for what happened with Agent Orange. Well, why are they calling it Agent Orange corn if it wasn't responsible for the side effects of Agent Orange? Yeah, and you know, like, without revealing a lot of information for the next article and um, sh a broadcast that we're going to bring you later this week or next week, is that there is a it's well known, it's declassified information, you can go look this up, that there is a chemical that is also sprayed on this, but now they've moved into where they are messing with the genetic DNA of the plants. You can look this up. If you can think of it, the New World Order is doing it. That's the main thing. A and some more, where they are genetically modifying the, the DNA of plants, especially in corn, to where it naturally occurs or it has naturally it has its own pesticide naturally growing in it, so they don't even have to spray pesticides on the on, on the crops anymore, and it kills the insects, the bugs and the insects, but they say it's good for us in small amounts. So that's just interesting to think, and you've got to also think, especially this article is mainly all about corn, mm -hmm. is that corn's in everything. It's, it's in our... It's in our uh, cereal, high fructose corn syrup, corn syrup. It's, it's in all the sugary items. Mm -hmm. um, if it's not in... Candy, yeah. 
and and it's a main thing that you do uh, feed to your kids to pacify them and yet people especially parents that aren't informed are just thinking they're giving this to their kids to you know get them to shut up but they don't realize they're feeding them cancer that's yeah. why america is the leader in cancer and cancer rates are on the rise autism diabetes we are the leader in those things and mm -hmm. all of a sudden it, it's like one in 88 children are born with autism um one in 133 are born with cancer or, or like are young uh, young children with cancer between the ages of five and 12 years old and and we're and we're always trying to get to the race of race for the cure but not race for the cause you know we don't ever wonder about what's the cause of the cancer we only mm -hmm. wonder about the cure of the cancer <laughs> is, is that not how can you how can you defeat yeah. if you don't know where it comes from in the first place and, and, and you want to know something if you ask the organization uh, the, the pink ribbon organization how about we like uh, how about you guys change your you know, informative campaign towards let's let's walk for the cause instead of walk for the cure. You know, it's it's something that's going completely untouched. No one's talking about it. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to talk about the cause. Everyone only wants to talk about the cure. I hate it. I hate the Susan G. Coleman fund. They say that they're doing stuff, but you don't ever hear or see anything about all the money that yeah. they are spending on research. Yeah. When you see a little eight-year-old girl that has no hair that's dying of, you know, leukemia or something, it breaks your heart. And to know that, you know, all, all of the good natural organic foods is talked down and played down, mm -hmm. that like, oh, there's no difference between organic food than genetically modified food. But that's not true at all. And, and like, we're going to start bringing you documented evidence to prove this. Since you guys think that we're just here talking out of our ass, we, we can guarantee you that this article will have solid information that you can look up and that you know when you when you see this video along with the article it, it's it better you better wake up guys because I mean we're, we're in this day and age where when you find this crazy stuff it, it's not a right to speak out it's your patriotic duty to do this what our forefathers set up for us anything mm -hmm. else guys no, no? I'm from I'm the peanut gallery <laughs> <laughs> no. no that's it man well, we just thought that we'd throw that out there. I think that it was important. What? You're acting all pissed off. Oh, I am because this off. is a natural reaction. You should be. It's not a laughing matter, really. Oh, no, I it's mean, not. I, you know, it should make you right, piss. No, no, no. Just to make this straight, I wasn't laughing because of the subject. You know, people might think that I was laughing about that. It's just like I, I was here drawing some stuff on my thing, and I drew something really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I drew something really funny, and I wrote funny on it, so I showed it to her, and that, that's why she was laughing. But uh, Well, yeah, that's okay, because, I mean, sometimes, I, especially me, I get us on a very serious note, and I keep it so serious, and we yeah. do need to, you know, this is exciting to learn this information, and you can have a good time about it. It doesn't always have to, have be, to be so serious. serious. Yeah. Exactly. We can have yeah. fun with it, and then at the same time, learn together. Yes. 